I know lots of you like to see um, how I do the ears, really detail it. It's, it's a, a superb area, a very good area to show you how to create all those wavy lines and build up the layers. No point me really talking over it much at all. You can see exactly how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to let the video run real time all the way through so you can see in this really very close up view exactly how I create all these textures, little hairs, wavy lines and build up the depth that's required to make this because it's a very um, central focus point. It's something people are going to really look at. It's not the center of interest as the eyes but this is not far behind it. It's a place people really expect to see lots of details. So let's see exactly how I create it. So first things first, the pastel under layer, the pan pastel under layer, which we saw on the first video in depth, how I applied that, that set the scene. That's give us a general color and the general tonal values, the lights and the dark. Now, before I get the details in, I need to get the real darks in place. And you can see I'm just rubbing them in fairly firmly, not, you know, very hard, but firm enough to blend the darks a bit because I don't want them really stark hard edge, not at the moment. And also to push it down into the surface, the lower layers of the pastel mat paper surface. Now that will then allow me to get the lighter tones on top, those details. Without the darks, the lights won't show up. Okay, so I've gone in with those darks and now I'm going slightly lighter. Remember with pastel, just like with oil paintings, we generally work from dark to light because we've got that ability that's much more difficult with colored pencils to put light over dark. And that I personally found coming from 20 years worth of oil painting, that worked very intuitively because it's how it works in real life, in nature. If you was looking at the ear in real life, you'd see the dark would be in the recesses down in the shadows. So that's what I'm putting in when I'm doing the darks. And then has as the haze would be in uh, lit by the light, then they get lighter, brighter as they come up through the layers until finally the lightest details are on top. And you can see that if you look just above the eye how those layers build up and that layering creates the depth and that feeling that you know you could actually put your fingers down into the fur and it would be deep luxurious in there so we've got to build layers just like the layers in real life to get that uh, simulation on a flat surface so here I'm just carrying on getting the darks in place sometimes I'm switching to a Caran d'Ache dark Caran d'Ache, I, I don't use many of those pencils, I find them a bit too soft, which then causes difficulty sharpening them. And I want to spend most of my time drawing rather than sharpening. Now also notice, even though this area is quite dark, I'm not covering it all with black. I don't want just a flat black section. Okay, so I'm leaving plenty of the underlayer showing through and as per usual making those strokes go in that fur direction and if you notice on the right hand side i've got my hand on my glassine paper now glassine paper if you don't know that's the sheets that come in between the sheets of pastel mat the protective uh, sheet in between the sheets especially if you have pastel mat books but you can buy glassine paper in virtually all online or physical art stores. Okay, it's just a pH uh, neutral acid free paper. You can see I'm here, I'm pushing a bit harder with the pencil because I want some real darks in this area. And then that fur comes around in direction. So always look, look at the direction, the way these haze and fur clumps are, are changing position and direction. Of 
concentrate in there on getting the darks in first. I don't want to go too dark because that's going to hamper me possibly if I'm trying to get very bright highlights. But I need to get the darkness in before I put the highlights on. I keep stating that, but you don't really want to put highlights on and then find you need to go darker after. It's better to go that bit darker first. Now, after the darks are in place, that's when I gradually go lighter. And note I said gradually, so I don't just grab my lightest uh, grey or lightest brown pencil and just start layering light tones on top. That's a mistake that many, many novices, beginners make. They don't see the subtleties in um, colour or the gradual change in tonal value. In other words, how it goes gradually lighter. So from the darkest recesses, that's when I've got some of these lighter uh, browns and sienna type of colours. You see I'm putting a bit of black back in there. Still wanted that area a little bit darker and that's okay. As you're assessing things, as the layers are building up, you get to see these little things that need altering. Okay, so do them when you see them. Now I'm using more of a flesh colour. And as I said, gradually building up the lighter tones. If you go straight to a really light, um, your lightest tone in one step, then of course you don't have many layers, so you're not building up the depth of fur. Now I'm generally bringing my pencil towards me, dragging it towards me. Every couple of strokes, I turn, lift the pencil and turn it. That stops me having a real flat edge on the tip after a few strokes. You see a few strokes, lift it, turn it. A few strokes and then I turn it. And that just cre keeps, as I said, that more conical shape to the top. Now I've changed colour. There are subtle colour differences. The more you draw, the more you create, the more you see the subtleties. And that's then how you improve. Okay, so you can I can show you all the techniques and that's going to greatly improve the, the speed at which you learn. So where it took me years, you know, to get to a, a decent level, it could take you just a couple of months to get to a, a real decent level. The more you practice, the quicker that happens. But don't expect, especially when you're just starting out, don't expect to be, you know, have perfection straight off. It, it absolutely doesn't work like that. So give yourself a bit of a break and realize, you know, it's a learning process. This in particular is not a journey that you should be rushing, it's, it's one to enjoy. So you see, I'm gradually building up those layers. Concentrating on that fur direction, doesn't have to be exactly the same as a reference photo, but in general. And you see, I'm really not pushing hard with the pencil either. If I want a very faint line I'm only using a tiny bit of pressure. If I want a more harder edged line that stands out a lot more, then I push a bit more. And also note, my pencil is not particularly sharp. Lots of beginners really, really over sharpen pastel pencils and then they keep snapping, either in the sharpener itself or as soon as they um, press it onto the paper. As I'm working my way down, you can see the marks are really standing out more. This is a very large scale drawing because I wanted to see how much detail I could put in it, detail and realism. Now with pastels, the size dictates to some extent the amount of detail we can put in. So if you're drawing really small, 
don't expect to super sharpen the pencils and get tiny tiny little details in there we've got the benefit the advantage that we can draw large and with my techniques it doesn't take a lot of time either it's really quite quick so we end up with larger drawings which can look much more dramatic especially if you're putting them in a gallery So as I'm working my way down, notice I do that twisting of the pencil that I spoke about. So it's not while I'm actually drawing, I then lift it, twist it, give it a turn or two. And some of these haze are quite wiggly lines as well. So look at that, especially with wild animals. Don't We don't want them to look like they've been brushed and they, they've been groomed textures, the positions of the haze, that's, that's what makes all of this interesting. See that comes around here, comes down, releasing the pressure as I come down into the darkness so that line kind of disappears as it goes into that dark area and I can always just give it a quick touch as well if I want to blend it slightly. As I keep building layers, you, you see that's where that depth starts to appear in the drawing. The highlights, remember they are the things that come on top. They are the icing on the cake. Don't want to rush to them. But you also don't want to add so many layers that you fill in the tooth of the paper and everything goes a bit fuzzy. Okay, so you've got so much pastel then sitting on the surface of the paper. It's all gone a bit muddy, fuzzy, blending together. Pastel matte paper gives us the opportunity to put on lots of layers and you should be able to get the effect you want with, you know, really three or four layers. If you find the details difficult to get on top, then you can start doing that twirling as you'll see as you're making the mark. Okay, that'll allow you to get a crisper edge, a crisper line. And also you can start using softer pastels, whether that's softer pastel sticks or softer pencils like Geoconda. The softer ones have more of a, a punch to them and I would only generally use them when I'm doing final, final details if I can't get my normal pastel pencils to kind of make the mark on top. So my normal ones would be more like Carbothello or Pit. So I generally now continue to add more details. If you want to see the full video, it's many hours long, uh, this Snow Leopard. It's on my Patreon art channel. I cover absolutely everything from the drawing, the layering, um, the initial underlayers, Everything is on it, really, really packed with my tips and techniques. Over on my Patreon art channel, I've got way over 1,500 members on there learning all these, these techniques so they can advance their art very quickly. And you also get access then to my secret Facebook group where I've got what I think is the friendliest uh, art group on there. As I said, it's members only and um, we're all there giving tips and techniques and helping each other along. So hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you there soon.